All right, go live. There we go. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting on the on the live page. We should be we should be live. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the party. Cod is back. Oh, okay. I'd start my intro too early. I think we're live now. What's good, everyone? <laughs> Two matches today. Yeah, we love the CDL. God, isn't the CDL just so good? You know what I mean? Like every day, there's always a good update about the CDL in their race. Absolutely, it's a uh, it's an exciting day. Yeah, only two man, only yeah, only two man match today. But we have an excited weekend. We got optic phase later this weekend, so I'm excited. For, you know, excited for the entirety of the weekend. Maybe not today. Today's a little bit of a tease for the rest of it all. This guy said post Ramadan for gays from Ace today. What do we think about that? What? The, how already? <laughs> the show just started. How yeah. am I already for gays? Post Ray Zero is just no, no, no. He said you're gonna be here in the post Ramadan for gays. Oh. <laughs> Well, how'd you, how'd you get on? I mean, when uh, Eid was, what, two days ago, maybe? Uh, yeah, Eid was on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, had a good one. Went to a local mosque here. There's a famous imam named Omar Solomon. He's, like, big on YouTube. Ah, like, the number God, one Omar. guy. Yeah, yeah, we got big Omar over there. So it was pretty cool to see him in, in his element. Um, <laughs> wanted to ask for a pick. He was frying. They didn't ask for a pick. Oh, yeah, he was frying, bro. He was frying. <laughs> um, had breakfast for the first time that day, and it, I, I haven't looked back since. I will say, Rab. Mm hmm this is crazy. So I last checked 10 days before the end of Ramadan. I was down 18 pounds. I think I'm more than that now. I might be down like 24 pounds. Wow. 200 to 176 in a matter of a month. That's very interesting. Yeah. I not a, a better diet plan that, than that, baby. It's the I, I best diet plan of all time. Guy or two that they're not even uh, Muslim, but they were doing it just for the, um, you know, other benefits, like kind of outside of just the religious stuff, you know. It's like you just tend to find with these practices, like when uh there's a reason why they're done you know what i mean yeah 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 they're, they're just going for the shredville i get it though i'm about it <laughs> yeah i respect that what's good out of a hacky <laughs> tactical f1 news goat yeah apart from yesterday when i uploaded the video on the alonzo stuff and then bosh literally the same minute ace that i published the video on like the mm -hmm. rumors of the day alonzo confirmed he was like staying with aston martin for another like three years so it's actually that might be the worst timing I've ever had, but I couldn't do anything you, about it because I was going. Did you remake you know. the video, or you just said, "Fuck it, I'm no, putting I it out"? I could. I could. I just had to. Put, I mean, the video was still kind of relevant, but I just had to make a pink comment because I was literally just dressed to go out. Like it was nothing I could do. Uh, What's good, okay, Sam? Okay. Much love from Essex, Damn, Essex boy, my guy, my guy. Let me let's shut everyone in the chat right now, really quick. Corey, Jordan, Nestor, Mujid, uh, Fergie, Christian, Nest, uh, Adam, Josue, Albini, of course. Cali, Wow, Drew, Foxy, Adam, Sam, Cooley, Alk, Fig, and Dan. Ayo, Ayo, one thing I want to do before we start the show, put where you're from in the chat. I'm just curious. Like, if you're like from a that. state in the U.S., put the state you're from in the U.S. If you're from the U.K., put what province, state? Where, what do you guys have? <laughs> province, county. Okay, yeah, yeah. Source, oh, yeah, county, yeah. my bad. Yeah. What county you're from from the U.K., <laughs> and if you're from another country outside of that, just put what country you're from. I, I don't know provinces in Canada, Mexico. So just Canada, Mexico, shout them out. Where are you from, bro? Let's go. Yeah, Trey might be here at some point. If uh, it, audio levels, let us know if there's anything you want to change in. But um, cool, look at all the boys. Arkansas, Cali, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Illinois. Oh, my God. Oh, Pennsylvania. Oh, look at that. We've got some of those. Tyne and Weir. Wow, let's go. Brighton. Ireland, Scotland, I met a guy yesterday Brighton. from Brighton, actually. I was out for some cocktails. The waiter, he was from Brighton. I don't, have I ever been to, I think I've been to Brighton once, maybe. Chicago, oh, downtown we got Netherlands. Dallas, oh, the heart of downtown Dallas. From, from Down, da he even has downtown, downtown Dallas. DTX in his name. Albania, let's go. Okay, shout out Albania. Uh, Newport, I went to Newport, Majahid, to get a new passport. I, uh, I lost my passport. And I needed a new one to go to maybe when, when I was going to Anaheim or something back in 2019. And Newport was the closest place to where I was living in Swindon where I could get an appointment. So it's like all the boys that have to sort out their visa stuff, you know. We got we got a Seattle. Sean, go, go over to the surge offices and, and go slap some sense in their head, okay? Do that for me. East <laughs> London. Uh, uh, is Trey getting another tattoo? Study, Probably. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, that Monterey, Mexico? Sheesh. Germany, Bavaria, love that. Maine, love that. South Africa, oh my, we got people everywhere out. Man, this is insane. We are international this evening. Absolutely. Wow, no man. way part of works in the passport office in Newport. That's so funny. Yeah, I've never been to one before, so I just like 
rocked up. And, but it turned out I hadn't even lost my passport. It was just in some other drawer. So now I now have two that are technically in date. But I think we only one of them works. Puerto Rico, Philippines, Wales, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Um, so true in Vancouver, actually. There's not much our boy can do. About that. Look at that. Albagra? Hilarious, gummy. <laughs> South Central? Oh, okay, that's blessings. Um, yeah, we're going to... Trey will be here, guys. So, yeah, Trey is on the way. He said he'd be a little late, but he'll be here. So, don't don't stress. No no yeah, worries. We're good. So, I mean, we're, to be fair, we've got a lot to dive into. I mean, let's. Just, I've just brought up on stream here the, the major four news. I mean, okay. what are we thinking about this one, Ace? Like, I mean, we heard about this for a long time, and then Ravens hit us with the announcement. The, the way they announced this is so funny to me. It's like, we regret to announce that. They don't even pretend to give some reasons. They're like, nah, we can't do it, lads. Sorry about that. We're just <laughs> shit, to be honest, is basically what they've said. <laughs> I mean, I also love how they put the second... They probably wrote the first paragraph here, and they were like, shit, that's a bit short. Like, we've got to put another sentence in. So then they just pretended that they're actually going to host an event again. Or they pretended that anyone is going to trust them to host an event again. Yeah, they, they have shown themselves, that organization for multiple years has shown themselves to be quite unreliable. Again, this ties into this event, the visa situations, not paying certain people back. But I feel sorry for the people in the Carolinas who really wanted to come to the event more than anything. COD, you know, esports does prosper over there. I'm selfishly kind of happy because it's the event will be in la so i get to go home i get to be comfortable i get to go in there get get great interviews because there's no no rush of fans and no worry of fans like you know bum rushing pros so selfishly i'm kind of happy we're going to la so that it sucks we don't get a proper major with fans i think that should be made up to the fans somehow some way but selfishly happy about it ravens l org Laven's in the chat. That's all I got to say. I mean, yeah. Do they spend all their money on like the facility for the boys? Like, are they, have they got the penthouse? Like, <laughs> thanks for the two bucks, Foxy. Yeah, you're actually bag on. Spent all the money on the visa lawyers. You mean the visa lawyers it's... that are shit can't even get a visa? <laughs> it's thing by thing, you know? It's thing by thing. First, they get the, you know, they haven't been able to pay people back for years, but finally they've gotten their people all in one place. You go, we've seen this. Brian Saints Penthouse. Tyler Fellow. Slowly but says, surely. They got the bottle of, bottle of vino. Oh, uh, we got Trey. I think Trey's here now. Oh, Trey? Trey's here. What's good, Trey? What's going on, guys? All right, give producer Rab a second to figure out what the hell's going on. Oh, that actually oh, wasn't Jesus. too bad. That actually wasn't too bad. Jesus. How are we? We're very well. Hi, oh, bro. Beautiful. Again, yeah, more tattoos again. am I seeing or no? No, 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 no. I had these last episode. Um, <laughs> I can't get any more tattoos. I got roasted on a shitty tattoo Reddit thread. So. <laughs> Was that actually real? Was that actually real? Yeah, no. So listen, all right, before we get into the Call of Duty nitty gritty type stuff, all right, listen. <laughs> so listen, some fan absolutely fucking despises me and sent that into shitty tattoos. Right, I got, once, I got it posted, once it got posted, once it got posted, he DM'd me. Thing. No, 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 no it's still up there. Trust me. I looked at it today because my barber wanted to see it. All right. Oh, here we go. I found it. So, all right. We lock in. Um, <laughs> he DMs me. You're a fucking clown. And sends me that. So I embraced it. There we go. Congratulations. So I'm back again with, a, with another cardigan because everyone <laughs> loved that the last time. <laughs> So I'm just showing you guys my cardigan collection. Don't let him bring you down, Trey. Don't I let him bring you down, baby. I would never. I'm for, I'm back and I'm here to stay. Forever. There we go. I Let's love go. it. I love it. We keep pushing. We keep moving ahead. We are... Uh... Trey's repping that Royal Ravens, you know, because he obviously loves... Yeah, the yeah, of course. He's on that Royal Ravens pack right now. <laughs> what do you think about... What, hey, yo, Trey, what do you think about uh, Major 4 being moved or being changed from in-person Ravens event to now... Burbank, LA, no fans. What's your thoughts? I think Breaking Point could do a better job, by the way. Oh, I think. I, I think. Um, I mean, we would actually do I, one. <laughs> I think I predicted this actually happening like before the start of the season when I found out they were hosting one. I said, they ain't going to host one. <laughs> <laughs> what annoys me about it is like, <laughs> if they didn't pretend they were going to host one, somebody else could have done. Because, like, Okay, sure, they're, they're probably not going to give two to Boston or two to Toronto, but, like, Optic would have done one, you'd have thought, right? I know they've got champs, kind of, but, like, you know what I mean? If Ravens didn't pretend they were going to do it, 
I mean, the funny thing happened. is, though, the funny thing is, is that this isn't just, like they haven't just like major two hasn't just happened and they've gone. Ah, you know what, fellas, we can't host it. Like <laughs> the league and everyone's known about this. I would assume for a while. And in theory, I'm not going to lie to you, but I think the CDL should push a heavy fine out to you know Carolina as well for doing that as well. That's because it's unacceptable. Well, because now they've got a. I mean, look. The CDL should be footing the bill for some of this stuff anyway, more than they do already. But like, at the end of the day, they've now got a pay to run this event. So, <laughs> you know, that's a cost they wouldn't otherwise have incurred. Well, yeah, that's my point. Like, so the league have got to like, you know, put this on now. Unless Ravens pay for like, all right, maybe that should happen. And Ravens should pay for everyone's travel. You know? I mean, I'd be down for that, but I don't think they're in the business of doing that shit. No, but like that's what should happen, bro. You were right from the beginning. They were never gonna do this. The league probably knew from week one that these <laughs> these guys were gonna <laughs> bottle it. Like it's it's nothing. No, no shock, right? Not surprising. Oh, it's not like Trey's been saying New York fucking sucks for about seventeen years, and bro. everyone just cut. Everyone's just like, oh, now they're the worst org. No, they're a dog shit org run by dog shit people and terrible humans. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, PD's right. Like, New York also fucked up when they were going to run that event that they couldn't run and they had to change it, the Major Four, whatever it was. But, like, I don't know. That situation was a bit different just because they had successfully done it the year before. And it was some sort of... I mean, what was the reason, Ace, for the, um, made the New York stuff? Because it was either they, a partner pulled out, which is probably more likely that some sort of sponsor pulled out, or um, it was like they couldn't run challenges there was the other thing that was said. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew pulled out. Mountain Dew, okay, yeah, yeah, it was a sponsor, yeah. So it's like, yeah, that makes sense. And sure, New York, obviously that's annoying. But in the Ravens case, it's like there was no hope from day one they were ever going to be able to pull this off properly. And they won't even tell us what the reasons are. And there's also no rumors as to what the reasons are. I don't know what the reason actually is. But like, Clay probably no, said to him. It's not been any rumors publicly, has there? So it's not like... Clay probably said to him, he's like, right, listen... If I'm coming to your org, I want an event. And they go, yeah, for sure, bro. Come on, <laughs> yeah, for sure, bro. They probably put a, sh you know, you go, yo, come on, Clay, we got you. Come over here, you know, have a home crowd for a major. Boom, fuck off. <laughs> You've been chalked. <laughs> LA event, though. I mean, last LA event was um, Champs 2022. Before that, it would have been like the. LA, I mean, was there a home series there back in M W nineteen? What was that? Because we haven't. I mean, yeah. we used to go to Anaheim every year, obviously. But like yeah, lately, no. there's not C been that many LA events. During CWL, there's been two events at the Galen Center. One was Champs, and there was one before that as well. I'm not sure precisely what it was, but I know for a fact that there's two two of them in LA, both at the Galen Center at USC. There was an LA. I think it was like there was an LA home series, the Dallas one. I think. Um, yeah, yeah. What, it was the last about, event before um, it went online. I think what they're going to do is have it hosted where, I mean, I, this is just spitballing, but do you remember Black Ops 3 Season 2 was hosted in Burbank at the ESL Studios? I do. Wow. Yeah. I think they might host it there. That might make sense, actually. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me, you know, like um, in terms of... Um, just in terms of like, they've already got the space there. I don't even know if ESL ESL still have it, to be honest. But I mean, I think I think they do only be, because of the fact that it's specifically in Burbank. Like they said Burbank, they didn't say Los Angeles. So I, the mm. fact that it is that still makes me think that it's the same place that uh, other esports, other esport events that we've done in the past, CWL times, we're going back to that same place, probably because of costs as well. Probably got a great deal instead of running a big, lucrative event. Let's do a smaller, tight knit closed off money saving event in Burbank, California instead of LA. I think that's the reality of it. It is an L overall, but I'm glad they didn't just cancel the major completely. At least we're having something they right, have I mean, to what? watch. <laughs> Imagine they just can't it. I mean, no, least, I, I guess I, it's at least is online, right? Because otherwise they would I, do on, online, I guess. Huh? I have a question though for you guys, right? This is this is an interesting question. Who benefits the most from there being no crowd? Which team? You mean so no one shit stays the same? No, no, no. no because think about it. Remember, dog within. We're talking. You remember like the bubble? Remember the bubble? Remember <laughs> the bubble? 
like at the NBA bubble and stuff like that. The Lakers were the most amazing team the next season. They couldn't replicate it. The crowd does something, right? It has some effect. So do you think you think Miami's going to be the best team post no crowd or with no crowd? <laughs> they don't just become the best team, but like I think if you can't win a play- line, you ain't winning, if you can't win a line, you ain't winning with no crowd. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think make out, we, make, we, make, we make out like these guys are like on, on like we make out like these teams are online gods and then go to these like go to the land and get pissed on. It's like oh maybe it's the crowd. No, same results, same everything. I, I mean like maybe someone might come out and do something, but I some of the players, uh, you know, they, the lights are too bright for some of these guys when they get to land. Yeah, and I think it's, it's a little lights. bit less the, the case crowd. without the. It may be true. I think I think I think uh, someone said Boston. That's messed up. Uh, NYSL is a good shout. I think that could be one of the teams that gets better. Does Optic get worse? That could be another idea as well. No, no support, no fan crowd, no yelling, no, no, They'll no buzz. Have the producers. That's true. <laughs> probably have the producers in the back. Great. Well, I think one you know, thing like, about you, this you, is you, not you, my contract. I was going to say, you know, when you, have you seen it? In like, um, you've seen it in like basketball, NFL, or like football or something like that, where like that te- uh, the opposite team scores, and like you can tell that like, the refs like kind of like low key a fan of them because like you're like. They're like, oh, yeah, like, nice, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, he looks like he's disappointed that something's happened. That's going to be one of the producers. He's got a bet on it. That's how it is. That's going to be one of the producers. Actually, wait. Actually, the best team, the best team no crowd is going to be LAG. I'm calling that right now. That's what I'm calling right now. LAG, watch them. Watch those guys absolutely tuck and slam on land. They've got the home event advantage being in LA. The home home (laughs) event advantage. (laughs) But they have fans, though. LAG. Who themselves? Their coaches? Yeah, maybe they're no, coaches. No, 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 no. When LAG go to these majors, like they actually have people that root for. For real? Oh yeah. You no, know, I agree. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. I think Only because it's in the hand thing. Because it's uh, because it's no fans, no like less pressure. I guess in a sense, I feel like they're gonna play really well. It's possible. Even better. The other thing I was gonna note is they pushed everything back, right? So because it was meant to be no break between. Because I guess Raven said, oh, this is the date we have for our venue. And therefore, they had to run all the qualifiers literally as soon as Toronto ended. Which is good for me because the weekend after Toronto, I'm in Indianapolis for the Indy 500. And I was like, how the hell am I going to do that and cover the cod on the same night? I ain't a problem anymore, baby. So shout out Ravens. Messing up the event. It's made the schedule better. And also God, it means God, I, um, that... Um, God, I fucking hate it. I hate it, honestly. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> because <laughs> like the person that works for me for like he mods my stream and everything like that is uh, Tom TCLX he like works with he's Raven. the one who tweeted he, like, this he's, yeah he's that community manager and he came on my stream today he was like he's like this is probably the worst day in Raven's history I was like yeah I mean like they've been getting roasted for four years straight this is certainly going to top it like and the tweets were bad there's there's not a single positive tweet there no, I get that it's just like there's now a break between the major and it coming back so like there's actually a week for teams to make changes if they want right so like post major four post major three that's when standy is gone and that's when rocker make the improvements let's actually do that real quick because minnesota rocker baby they've made a team change they've finally done it gunless is back in the league i know you've been talking with him ace you spoke to him when he won the challenger side it's good to see him back in the league i mean what a quality player to watch in his prime I'm here for the Gunners versus Beans drama, personally, because they're now both back in the league. It was May last year. They were beefing to high heaven, and now they're both back, and they play soon. I think they play in about nine days' time, so I'm buzzing for that. I, I forgot that beef even. That was the most, that was the weirdest beef I've ever... Let me ever... find it. <laughs> I, just, I, I couldn't understand why everyone was siding with Gunners on that, to be fair. I actually think it was Bro. NA bias why people were siding with Gunners. That was the weirdest beef I've ever seen in my life. It was the most, like... I don't know, Gunless was tweaking on that one, actually. <laughs> All right, here we go. Did Beans like, just scream from shit at two people that weren't even looking at him? And then uh, <laughs> the Gunless just absolutely went off on this guy. It was comedy, to be fair. And then... Uh, it was, was crazy. Like, it was just... It was out of nowhere. So, like, they probably <laughs> never even spoke before. Yeah. I never know. even spoke. And Pierce just went wild on him for no reason, bro. Yeah. But they're both back in the league now. So I can't wait to see who wins that series next week. So, I'm, yeah. hey, yo, I'm going to say I'm, I'm very happy Gunless is back in the league. This well deserved. <laughs> as much as uh, as there's some people in the TL, <laughs> eating a dog that don't want to see him back in the league. It's amazing to see a player 1.0 above got screwed dog. out. 
yeah, got screwed out a little bit out of the league. So it's great to see Gunless back. I think seeing him in a in a oriented system too, like he's playing with a quality player like Lamar. He has a good rookie with Linz. And then you got now Standy too. So I think it, it's a good setup for him. Better than the last couple of years he had in the CDL. Better than most teammates. So I think it's a good setup for Gunless uh, to prosper, do well, and showcase the talent we all know he has back in the CDL, back on Rocker. Unfortunately, today against FaZe, but that's a different story for later in the show. All right, that's a, all right, that's a foul one, though. <laughs> that, that, I, that, I, it's a foul one, though. Like, Yeah, to start off your season with that is a fucking dagger, bro. Bro, I might just... Like, listen, if that's them, I'm like, listen, you just like, can you sign me? But like, yo, I'm, I'm on a video <laughs> until, like, until the second match, and I can't stop it. Like, my cat fell down a ski slope, and I can't attend to that. Only that match though. So like, good luck to you boys. But like, I'll I'll be frying for the five. Imagine they win though. If they win, bro, Rocker seven zero eight zero. Rest of the rest of the qualifiers. If they win against Phase, I'm I'm calling I'm calling a undefeated streak through qualifiers. Bro is lost. <laughs> I mean, how do we if think they win? Now I see why people say cheese. This is the post Ramadan cheese. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> there it is there it is uh okay and then the standy pickup i know that some people wanted us to talk about the standy pickup um on this hey, he's squad, back again like i actually was <laughs> how does he keep going right, back for the right, dead this bro? guy is he's the reaper wild, bro this he's guy is reaper. crazy i need uh, where was this when i got dropped this guy's guaranteed <laughs> a spot everywhere how this guy's guaranteed it, a spot everywhere how does he do it this guy's guaranteed a spot everywhere eli Trey, you need to take some slim reaper lessons from eli standy it seems Eli Slim Reaper Standy. That's who this guy is. Slim Reaper. I, that's his new nickname. Let's dub him that. Because anytime you try to kill him, he just comes back out like Undertaker. It's he, bro. I'm I'm only thing I'm curious about on this team right now is Standy Lynn's duo combo, right? Standy is known to I'm not gonna say bait, but like he's known to play a little slower um, in matches. So I'm very curious to see two generally more methodical, slower subs. How they're gonna balance out their play style going ahead. So that's my biggest concern with this team is the sub duo. They're both very talented players, but sometimes it's not about talent; it's about how you mesh well. So very curious to see how Standy and Linz uh, accommodate for each other, play off each other, and especially in response, how they bang out the hill. Honestly, I think this is the slowest. I, I think this is the slowest team in the league on paper. Yeah. Um, which doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It means that if they're if they're gonna play slow on on paper, if they're gonna play slow like that, it means they just need to have their teamwork on deck. Which you know I, I believe they will. But on paper, this is probably the slowest team in the league. Um, you know, you got Lamar, Pierce. You know, Pierce has been playing a more you know main AR role in challenges recently, and then Lamar's obviously been a main AR since his whole career. I don't think the guys ever picked up a sub. Um, <laughs> You wouldn't and want then, to say that, I don't think. Yeah. Lies. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, like Linz, you know, we we deem him like in the com, you know, in the conversation for rookie of the year. The issue is, is that he was doing extremely well until that optic fumble, and then just deteriorated over the time. So I'm hoping, which is by like like that's what I said, need to happen to Boston. All right, they didn't make a one man change; they got a two man change, and they done it when they needed to. This, it's gonna be. Honeymoon period, but also if they can transition, you know, that into like a consistent team, especially with FaZe, you know, they need to have a good showing versus FaZe today. I know limited practice and everything like that, but they need to have a good showing versus FaZe just to keep the confidence up. The poll is actually hella close as well. 48-52 for, for no map wins. Majority of people said 3-0, but 48% of people giving them a map. I, I, Typical. I'm being honest. I'm not, I'm not cheesing around. No problem alone here. Three, two, the S and D, the S and D is where I think that actually Rocker can take a map off a of phase. Specifically, also because right because that that team, if you look at it on paper, is a really good S and D team, the Rocker team. So I think they'll be able to take an S and D for sure. Control, I don't know, two hard points, I don't know, but I'm gonna say the S and D is the map where I'm the most confident that Rocker could take one off of phase. I've got a take on this team from like a coaching perspective. This is the test as to whether Brian Saint was the fraud or whether Looney is the fraud. 
because <laughs> Brian Saint, I'm not a big fan of his work, but I will say that, that over the last, the drama that Rocker had in terms of play styles and stuff, Brian Saint's now gone and they're making some interesting decisions. And if this team shits the bed and Ravens do quite well, then I'm ready to accept that, you know, maybe I wasn't familiar with Brian Saint's game. I don't know if that's true though, but, you know, I'm going to stay tuned because all I'm saying is that this time of the season, the game tends to get faster and we've just brought in Vista, we've just brought in Six Star, we've just, well, Rio's been in the game for a little while now. It's going to be a lot of SMG presence. Somewhat concerned about a slower paced team, especially this time of the year, especially with the maps that changes. So, yeah, not convinced, but we'll see. Also, whoever said six star is, you know, raid just because it's got a fucking swimming pool. Yeah, <laughs> you're off the henny. That map might be the most polar opposite to raid I've ever played in my life. But the doors are funny, aren't they? Should I find this doors clip? Whoa, wait, oh, wait, yeah, yeah. we've got, we got gotta... bulletproof doors, and it's got it's it's got a pool. It's got a pool, and everyone was like, raid. <laughs> no, no, I, I gotta, I gotta, I there think go, we got, I, I think we got debated, bro. I think we got truly got debated by whether it was the CDL, whether it was Call of Duty, whether it was Activision, I don't know, but we got debated so hard to believe on paper and how they advertised it that it was raid. I'm just saying. Bro, I, mean, I don't think it was never, our This was never going to be anything like raid, ever. No, on ever. paper and on the outline, it was like, oh, they modified raid a little bit and put it in the game. That's what it looked like. And and, they, guess, they, and, 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 actually, and you knew what you were doing when you put that preview and, video out. And you guess, and, and guess who? Yeah, said it was not not going to be anything like raid. And everyone was like, but Trey, it's got the pool, it's got the middle, <laughs> and it's got the left. And I said, fuck you all, this ain't happening. <laughs> All right. never wrong, I, played, I played the map for the first time in rank play, and it was like I was running through a maze. There was nothing about it. It was <laughs> terrible. But it looks pretty, Trey. And honestly, I don't even give a shit how well it plays. I just think it looks better than Invasion, so I'm here for it. Oh, yeah, no. Listen, Invasion. Uh, that needed, oh that, that, listen, Invasion, invasion needed to go. Invasion is but now just grey and brown now, and well, shit now, now, now I'm in Dubai on top of the Burj Khalifa with bulletproof doors and a fucking pool that has a hill in it. Wait, dude, everyone like Joe. I think the new the new meta now is just colors. Vista, yeah. Six Star, Rio. Throw There's colors on maps. And everyone's like, on God this map. Like. I mean, look at this shit that happens here. Invasions, invasions are actually not that is is like an ass map because it looks boring. But soon enough, people are gonna say Karachi's ass because it looks boring, and we're gonna need another colorful map back. Like we're gonna need like Evac from Black Ops Three back in the game, and then everyone's gonna be juiced because it's colorful. Wait, no, Karachi was no, class no, no, until no. they ruined it for no reason. That, that, that's that's what that's how you get people these just days. Just add some color to Karachi, you'll be fine. Everyone will love that's it how, again. That's how you get. That's that's what happens these days. You could add a rainbow to Karachi, and everyone's like, "Wow, best map in the game." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like the thing is, Treyarch would produce the colorful maps that were actually good. So that's why, you know, the colorful maps get the, ah pink sky. Wow, love this map. Now spawns are great. <laughs> these are the official changes. Like, actually, this is the other thing I wanted to bring up here because. For Ravens, they must be buzzing with this. As Clay says, don't got to get good at the maps if you just get them out of the map set. Because these are, according to Money Hill stats, the records. We know that Ravens, not the best invasion hardpoint team, Trey, as we've pointed out on some occasions. So on on some uh, occasions. Not, sorry, Rab, you say not the best. <laughs> yeah, not the best. Not the best. <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah, not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brian I think Brian Saint Brian Saint should have been sacked just for picking that map eight times. Yeah, okay, maybe maybe my take was premature on that. After the after the zero and four, I'm thinking, fuck me, they get this out. No, 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 no. They play another five times. Yeah, bro. Oh and eight oh. on invasion, two and three on Skid Row Hard Point, and then they're one in five on terminal search Ravens. So they're three and sixteen total map cut across those maps. Bro, the, the 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 fact that they try to turn it into like Clay try to maybe be funny and turn it into like, don't gotta. Why did you play it eight times? Let let's get to the actual dagger of the he fact. He replied, I think. Eight times? That's yeah, on yeah, you. Was... If you look at the, every other team, basically, except they're good at it. Even teams that were good at it didn't play it eight times. So kind of absurd. Yeah, that's Could've... my point. See, what did I say? I was like, yo, this literal bow cage. That's why scrims suck. We were so good at bow cage and, but we never played it in matches. 
because we played it. Guess what? We played it twice in matches and got fucking bopped. So we were like, all right, we're just not good at it in matches. It took them eight losses in a row and not a single win to realize <laughs> we're not good at this map in actual matches. Fire in scrims, though. After the first two, I'm thinking maybe other teams just don't try it and it's hard. It ain't that good. And... But guess what? Yeah. Someone put it in the chat earlier. Never wrong, just early. <laughs> <laughs> um speaking wait, wait i think we have the the maps there for atl and uh rocker by the way too. we can run through that before i get there let's oh, talk Illy real quick ah oh, shit here we go yeah he's yeah, officially yeah. gone released from surge what an organization by the way one of my favorites i feel like for Illy, you gotta think like there could be something in his future this year i mean i don't know he says that probably does it for me this year it's got to be a chance. I think I would have agreed with Illy until Ravens just cancelled Major 3, Major 4, and then it got pushed back by a week. Because now that actually gives a chance for teams to make changes up to Major 3. I don't know where Illy would go, I, though. I don't see it. But I also, yeah. don't, see, I also don't see Standy getting picked up, so hmm. we'll, we'll be seeing Illy on phase, I guess. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to say the one thing about this Illy move that... It would have been possible. I think a lot of teams could do better and improve by picking up Illy. But the fact that he tweeted this out, similar to how we talked about the exceed thing of like how he tweets something out and what it reflects back on him, this just looks so defeated. You know, he's like, it looks like he's saying his, his year is done and it's over. So he's kind of putting the stamp, he's kind of putting the seal on the close of the year. If he had tweeted out instead, like, you know, I'm ready to go whenever, this just didn't work out, you know, GG Seattle, Fuck Seattle, <laughs> but I'm ready to go whenever. That would have been a really different response. And I think teams and people would be looking at this very differently than when he puts out a message like this to the community and to teams and to coaches, scouts, whatever you want to say. Yeah. The issue is, is that he's genuinely not had a full year in the CDL bar year one, right? Yes. I mean, that just, that, you know... I would be defeated. I mean, he was too. on the. He was Cold War was fine, but yeah. Ever but since Cold War, then. Cold War, they had him running like a sub and stuff too. Like it Cold was, was a weird. A bit year. Weird, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was I, a I weird year. Online all. cheese, you know. I I know for I know for a fact I know what you're saying, Ace. But there's like, like exceeds playing every single time. He just had two bad stints in the league. Whereas Illy, like like you said, he fried at major one and just gets benched. Like, obviously, there's like other stuff in the background, whatever like that. But I'd be defeated too. The guy literally can't catch a break. One year his hands hurting, so he like, like he, he can't play. He comes back. It's not fully. It's not fully healed. Cold War running a sub. He plays one year in the league and wins champs. You know, plays one full year, wins champs. Be it online, whatever you want to call it. And then ever since then, he's just been issues on issues on issues. Like I'd feel defeated too if I was him. Honestly, um, I do think he'll get another team, but like. Whoever picks him up next has to be like. I feel like I feel like you need to take care of Illy, honestly. Like he needs a bit more care and attention than a lot of other people. Um, I think, you know, always checking in on him, seeing if he's all right and stuff like that. Because I, I don't know Rambo hasn't tweeted for for four months, um, so I don't know if he's even you know checking on the players or whatever like that. So, <laughs> you know. He's too busy throwing people with a King Kong animation, so... Um, too busy at a bowling alley, what I heard. <laughs> speaking of... Um, speaking of... Uh, bad things that have happened, uh, before we talk about the match, um, pros uh, using hackers to get camos. What's yeah, going let's on with do, this? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. It's actually funny because Abuza blocking me has come back to help him because I can't see his tweets here unless I find a screenshot. <laughs> but I do have a screenshot, uh, you know, you know, so don't You know worry. what, Rab? Guess here what? He go. hasn't blocked me, so... <laughs> this is today's update um, you guys probably saw this the other day the boozer basically tweeted out I've been banned my account's been banned so can you explain this Trey like because people are saying that in order to get this unlock tool to work you have to use some shit which also has hacks on it well yeah it's it's no different from you know a guy you know do you play MW2 with some fucking with, with the mod menus like <laughs> yeah listen 
You are professional players, yeah, who do not need camos because you don't run camos in game because you have a fucking there's a there's an overlay on the stream that shows what camo you have. I have no idea why you, as professional players making over six figures a month, uh, six figures a year, would want to have an unlock tool being used on your CDL account that you have to use for professional matches. Sorry, I'm holding my mic. My mic stand broke. My mic arm broke. Um, he also done a tweet saying like, oh, I've been banned. Yeah, this um, is, well, this is the first one. He yeah, no, th there was another one. Um, oh, he was roasting some guy. Is that the one you mean? Uh, no, so, like he tweeted like, I think he deleted it. He tweeted something like, uh, been banned to my CDL account, lol. And someone was like, uh, doesn't this mean something? And he goes, no, only done camos. Like, what do you mean only done camos, bro? <laughs> I never breached you yet. Everyone uses the shit for camos. Yeah, okay. no, so it, he, he replied, people hacking him ranked every game. Like, come on, brother, you are a professional player. Like, you don't need camos on your account. I can't the believe they thought they could do this shit. Go on, nice. The, the biggest issue of this all is that you should be smarter than this. Yes, I'm glad there's a system in place that's getting rid of people that are exploiting the game in any way. But at the same time, I know you laughed at this point a second ago. There are still so many hackers in Warzone and in Ranked that their accounts, yet this exploit, the more prominent and game-breaking one, has not been addressed and not gotten handled. So what does it take for them to focus on that versus camos? God help us, please. I mean, I don't know tweet about this, but it is right that... Um, let, me go through my tw let me go through my replies real quick. Um, I done a tweet about it. Like, obviously, we're all correct when it comes down to it, right? Fair enough. Like, yeah, people are spin button and stuff like that. Um, people are running around spin button and everything like that. One, it hurts their pocket. Two, it's so much easier to find people with unlock tools and camo like that. I've used the unlock tool for camos and stuff like that because guess what? The unlock tool, guess what? It doesn't. It doesn't max out your level. It doesn't do that stuff. So you could run around with a fully decked out, fully leveled up gun with a full camo on it, and it's still level one. Especially that they can just search in. Um, you can search in, like, you know, user slash camo, whatever like that. Um, it's... It doesn't... It, yeah, like, it doesn't boil down to... Like them just being going on there and be like, oh, look what they've done. Yeah, it hurts their pockets, but I think it's much easier to find camos than it is to find someone with embedded hacks in their thing. Fair point. Scrubby says it right. I mean, how brain did he got to be? I thought, I mean, this is one thing Aix is actually right on. IQ level <laughs> of pros. I didn't know you had some beef with eggs, right? What's going on there? <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know. When did I beef with eggs? It was, so, I don't know, I joined some flag episode at some point and uh, I called him out a little bit. All in good fun, you know. But he is right that the IQ of pros nowadays has got to be the lowest ever. You also think like, all right, this is another thought exercise for those in the chat. Rank esports on average intelligence of their pro players. Because Cod's oh, got to be down there. It's got to be down there. We're rock bottom, bro. We've, we've, lost, we've, we've, we, 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 we've lost Rambo. We've lost TP. And we've lost, we've, we've lost, we've lost Big Timer and all that. We've got Abuser. <laughs> buying camos on the CDL account. <laughs> We're at rock bottom, bro. And Abuser, I'm not, I'm not saying you've got zero IQ. I've got, I, this, go, this goes to everyone who has gone on there and bought camos. Ah, Cities, I'm looking at you too, Alakar. <laughs> you ain't slick, kid. I've heard you done it too. <laughs> How many pros have done this, do you know? Because initially I heard like uh, people said that Vivid got banned for it, Draws got banned for it, uh, Beans got banned for it. Those are the four that I heard. But I haven't I'll heard anything I'll find out if you want me that. to. It seems, like, it, seems like Clay, it seems like Clay's got a... Got, got a good know-how. Spin it. You know, I'll ask Spinner. I'll ask my boy Spence. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll ask my boy Spence because he done a tweet saying, um, what was it? Like, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah. Um, I had people come to my stream. They were like, these pros should be fined like a whole month's salary. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Here he is. Our boy. Nah, it's true though. There you go. There's the tweet. 
Average IQ of nah, praise, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, how dumb do you have to be to let... Listen, you've let a hacker go on your account to give you camos. Like, surely you sit there and think about it and think, you know what? Oh, it's like on your because, fucking because, work PC, like, because, torrenting listen, a movie I'm a, or something. I'm going to be shit. real, bro. I'm going to be real. I've been told that those... The, 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 the unlock tool and stuff like that comes with hacks with it. Like, you have to, like, yeah, stop okay, those. Yeah, exactly. That's what people are telling me. So... I'm not even like, listen, you pros are very, very, very stupid for doing this because they do come with hacks embedded on them. And I'm pretty sure you have to like, they have to like stop them from going into your PC. Like, so Bro, if, uh, if a boozer uh, uh, is, is this shit with hacks, what is he like without <laughs> hacks? No, I'm what? not saying he's hacking. I'm not saying he's hacking, but hacks, just, so. just, just, just imagine, yeah. Just imagine the guy that put the camos on there didn't turn it off. Yeah. And we've got fucking we've got these legends going around <laughs> popping off seven pieces and it was like right this guy's the best player in the world and then he gets banned comes back and gets pissed off damn jimbo v2 i mean it's like what happened in that apex tourney where they they got the players were getting hacked nah, they Jimbo's would just smarter give them than hacks this. you know what i mean J Jimbo didn't do this in the league. He done this in challenges. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually. We've got we <laughs> Jimbo done this in challenges. We've got people doing this in the league. Vivid Abuser Beans Optic minus Kenny. Yeah, so it is right. Optic actually did do this shit. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? It's like if we're talking about IQ of players, it's obvious <laughs> that it's going to be Dashy. Like, no disrespect, Dashy. He's probably the highest of the three. But Shotzi and Pred for sure. They're not Kenny, obviously. I mean, it's honestly incredible, isn't it? Even right, though Pred was talking shit to uh, to Scrappy, it's so hilarious. I don't know about that. It's, it's hilarious. hilarious, honestly. I can't it's believe I, I can't believe anyone would even like anyone's like backing it. You know, like oh, it's only camos. Yeah, it's only camos. But do you know what you have to do to get the camos? It's not like you run into a wall and get them. I also just think, like from the Activision side, it's kind of interesting because. I mean, what did Clay say? Do they had to pay? He heard someone had to get fined or something, right? Um, when this happened before, because they've got to make another account for them. Because people are saying, oh, well, maybe just ban their shit forever and give them a big suspension. But yeah, someone said two week suspension. Happened. I said, fucking hell, the league wouldn't be able to cope. You meant to have a one minimum sub on your team, would be watching coaches play. <laughs> I was thinking that okay. for Surge, because who, who even is their sub? Got to be Rambo Ray, right? I mean, I would that would that would be a blockbuster series to see Rambo Ray get back on the sticks and and like what if it was against like I don't know who who, who would be the most epic series? Him against Optic or something? He just yeah. gets on the sticks, slams Optic or something. Like with Mark B, you know. When he that was a, up that's to a the legacy plate. series right there, baby. <laughs> legacy series. We need to see some more fun like that happen again. We're speaking of uh, wait, did, did we go over the 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 bio clip? By the way, uh, no, I can just like, I'll just we can just talk about it. To be honest, we got this I mean, one, and then we've got a little, a little bit of a bombshell, a little bit of a bombshell. Yeah, we little bombshell. I mean, actually, yeah, this is the other thing we were gonna say on search. Yeah, just just to show you what a quality organization they are. This was the actually this was probably the main one. It's funny as four twenty as well. This is such a hex number to come up with, no. 420k to buy out Pred, and they said no. Okay. He, he was probably puffing on the Pine Park, you know. <laughs> he goes, 420, yeah, 420k, yeah, for sure. For sure, like 420k, for yeah, sure, yeah, for sure. For sure. But like, <laughs> for search aside, I just don't understand, like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna commit to Pred this hard, you're turning down all this cash, why not actually commit to making a good team? This is what confuses me so much. It's like, Okay, whatever. I almost respect saying no with the intention that you think Pred's a superstar player that you're going to capitalize on. But then they just sit there with a bad team the whole year and don't even bring in Gwyn. I'm like, what are we doing? I don't think it's about that, bro. I think it's if you're turning down 400, 500k and you're not re-signing him to be your franchise player year after year after year after year. Like, yeah, the team's one thing, but like to let him go at the end of it just because it's the end of the season, bro. Like, the... These teams are so dumb. How are no, you not going to sell it? How are you not going to sell your best player for 500k when, like, it's not like you win in every event possible? 
It's not like you're I, a dynasty team. No, no. I would say I, I would say one thing though. It's like you do kind of break. You kind of ruin your team and bust the league a little bit if you allow AG for any amount of money to transfer from your team to their team. So I think it, there is a problematic part of it. Plus, you, see, you mentioned this franchise tag and re-signing. Realistically, even if uh, Seattle matched whatever offer that Optic gave or, or I think FaZe gave or whoever gave, what, realistically, do we think Pred is staying with Seattle over Optic or FaZe? No. So realistically, the only reason... No, I'm saying the only reason to stay or the only reason to not go has to be higher up saying no, the team itself saying no, and for the reason of wanting to stay competitive, winning, and trying to keep pushing ahead with, into that year. And, you know, they won, they won a major. You know, they did well at champs. So the team believed, you know, the, the, the organization believed in this team. Letting him go at that point, I think, didn't make sense from a – a uh, strategic standpoint if you're the Seattle Surge last year. I mean, this is a business. Okay, the, 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 the two sides of business. The monetary side is also the, in, in a competition-based business, is the competitive side. Two sides. Yeah, but everyone's, think, not, you, you, everyone, everyone's there to make money. Yeah, but you think without Pred, they would even remain, you think they'd even be slightly competitive? No, but they would have made half a mil. Yeah, but do you think half a mil to a billionaire organization means anything? Or do you think actually looking good and, and being able to win and showcase that is more important to a team? You know, I mean, Brett, they've got this much money I mean, for I mean, 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 you are talking about a team that has formed and <laughs> looks like they don't care. So, yeah, I would take the 500K for sure. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, okay. if, if the money don't matter to these guys, like, let's let's. Where's, where, where, with where's this money. the top four squad? <laughs> yeah, yeah, where's the good money team? Don't matter. Without, where's I mean... the top four squad? Where's your <laughs> events? Where's all this kind of stuff? Yeah, you got that like, one event in Vanguard. What well are guys? But now you know, uh, you fell off again. So you know, well done, everyone. And you won't host and the yeah, event. Like, yeah, you, you, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah, like it fucks up the team. But like, one, it's business. Two, Pred. Come on now, Pred. <laughs> Pred's gonna want to join Optical Phase mid-season. Let's not be dumb. Right. The phase one's interesting, right? Because, like, going into that year, they tried to get Shotzi, but then Skump came back because Shotzi didn't leave. They then tried to get Pred, I guess, and put Simp to the flex, which would have been bloody hell. That would have been crazy. And then they, like, they're basically left having to pick up Slasher because no one else is available. So, I mean, my, my thing is, though, is it's like, we... We talk about how boring roster changes are. We literally have this one that would have blown up roster mania like mid season. Like someone's getting bought out. Like it happens in all sports, you know. You know, big player gets bought out. Optic or phase prove they want to win. Seattle's okay taking a bit of money and picking up someone else that they could potentially do the same thing. And they don't. That could have that 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 right there, Ace, could have been like the start. Like that could have popped off of people buying players mid season. Because but, now, okay. if you but because now, if it, like now, if you look at it these days, like if you offer a player, if you offer the best player on someone's team five hundred k to an organization to join, and they say no, it's like all right, there's nothing else we can do. Like, I agree with this, but there's no player like Pred this year. That there's no there, there's no player as impactful and as good as him. So like, maybe yeah, in a couple years we, we see something like this again. But as that's of right now, saying, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't that, really matter that, yet. That's what, that's what I'm saying, though. But I'm saying, like, it doesn't have to be a superstar every single time. Like, you could try and buy a player off another team that you think is going to make your team better. Like, I don't know, like, the top six teams could be like, or like, a, you know, outside the top four could be like, oh, this player on this team makes our team better. Like, I just know it, blah, blah, blah. And he has like an 80K buyout on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, those things that could exist to make Rostermania, you know, I know orgs aren't here to make Rostermania interesting, but I'm saying, like, that sale there could pop off future sales for players. Now I feel like we'll never see it again, ever. Uh, there I will say there are buyouts that are made that are no, that are happening behind the scenes. But the this is one that got made public now. But buy like imagine this thing happened, right? Imagine this happened at the time. We wouldn't have even known about the buyout. We would just known somehow Optic acquired Pred. 
that's would have been the extent of what the public yeah, would but have if, known. It, if anyone le- if anyone gets out of their contract midseason, it's a buyout. No, I agree. I agree. My, my point is, my point is that there have been other cases where this has come up. Maybe not gone through fully, but there's definitely been cases where buyouts and not 400k buyouts, but smaller buyouts have happened in the league, and people just aren't aware that they were buyouts. It's happened. Yeah, but that doesn't happen mid-season, though. Fair enough. That's, that, ha- that's that, 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 that happens in the off-season. When, play- when a team wants to get a player before their contract runs out, so they'll, they'll spend like 10, 15k, give it to the org, and be like, yeah, we need this player, we'll buy him, we'll show a little buyout, and then we'll sign contracts, whatever, like this. Even, I mean, lo- I mean, even potentially, I don't know, we don't know exactly if uh, Ilya was still signed, but that could have been a potential one that, that almost happened. I mean, yeah, try it. I mean, that's what Seattle probably done. They tro- they probably tried selling him, had his trials with Rocker. They thought, all right, if they- if Rocker won him, we'll sell him. And then Rocker, like, obviously it fell through or whatever like that, like, with, with Illy and uh, with Illy. And then, you know, Rocker, uh, Seattle probably like, you know what? We're a multi-billion dollar org. We didn't sell Pred for 500000 so we're going to get rid of Illy. <laughs> that's, def- that's definitely the, log- the logic they were under. They said, fuck, we fucked up a Pred. Let's fuck up here again. Let's, let's just fuck up twice. Why not? No, that, that, that's, that's good business of like keeping a player and then trying to sell him. But like I said, in the CDO, it's not good business because no one buys said player. Unfortunately. That's insane. That's insane. I mean... Uh- what, what again? So many things could have been. Hindsight is freaking twenty twenty. Um, you know, a, a, a source. Uh, the sources that say that the Seattle offer to AG was record setting. Yeah, uh, the extension was record setting. But again, when you get when you get the optic or phase call, it's just one of those ones that I think no matter what. Seattle, I think, was probably over their heads thinking that they could keep him probably at the end of the season. They had a chance to keep him, but not realizing how vital and important an optic or phase offer is. But they you play, seen you what happened with Octane, though. You know what I mean? It's like, they already lived that storyline once. So Right. It, I mean, it, it, you see, the thing is, though, is just like, right, so you, you got three decisions there. You know, stay on, stay on Seattle, make life-changing money, like more money than everywhere else. You got optic where you could probably potentially make the same amount of money with everything that comes along with it, with the social status, with the streaming, with the ads, with you know sponsorships, and then you got phase who just constant, you know, are like top of the game, always, you know, looking at winning stuff like that. So there's three ways of looking at it, and you know, it all depends on what route you take. I think he took the best bet with optic in terms of it's a you know potential winning team with the status of being you know the most known team in the league and everything that comes with that so i think he made the right decision in that aspect like like you said if, if optic come crawling then you always go with optic i feel like there's only been a few players that i've actually known to turn down optic okay but like but yeah the optic the optic thing is so big that like you have ag you know potentially putting down seven figures a year just to go to optic so it's like yeah, that, that optic also. Uh, I was gonna say that also comes in tune with Ace. Like, if they give him that much money, then the team around him is probably gonna suck ass. <laughs> you think so? You ain't paying a player one, like you know, let's say seven figures a year, and then building a fucking superstar team around him. I mean, they say they say that Scump Scump was getting somewhere, had to be getting somewhere high sixes, sevens, you know, somewhere up there. His team was pretty fucking good, to Op- be honest. Optic, optics completely different. Optic phase. Why, no, wait, wait. why do you say that though? Because Seattle is a billion dollar organization. Why couldn't why can't they be they do what Optic would have done if Cause they London, kept cause, cause like London because London tried because London tried doing the same thing with Afro. What? Not, not, a million dollars? No, 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 not 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 that not to that extent. But they were gonna offer him a crazy like a, a like you know a top tier salary to keep him, but their thing was, you know, we're gonna if we offer this, this, everyone else is on the min. Hey, you, you rat bastard! Did you just compare the Ravens to no, Optic I'm not co- and Seattle Surge? I mean, everyone's got money. It just depends on how they want to play it. But I'm just Brother, I'm three, just, three, three. This is major three, and they just got the Charlotte. The fuck are we talking about? No, I'm not saying that right now. I'm saying like at the time, like organizations are gonna have to decide what they want to do because you know they ain't gonna make money if they 
I mean, if you give Pred a million dollars a year and you get another super, free superstars around them, you're probably not going to make money. Actually, I can guarantee you're not going to make money. What, wait, I actually have a thought too. What, what the would the timeline of, of events be different with Pred on that team? Because then doesn't that mean uh, uh, Scump doesn't retire as well? Well, not like to get wild... the time. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Scump said yeah, yeah. didn't didn't Scump say he wouldn't retire if they got Pred? Like that was it, right? That's what I'm saying. Like the the, the, the timeline I, of things I, changes I, I, literally. I think he I think he still retires at the end of the year though. Mm, no matter what you think, unless they like win champs or something, something insane. Yeah, you got you got to think like Octane's like the same, you know. Like Octane could still be at the top of his game, top AR on a top team, but you know, with the way COD is these days, like doing content and being happy, like they got fiancés, you know, they're trying to you know live out a future and stuff like that while still making the good money and all that kind of stuff whilst whilst maintaining their status in the in the scene. You know, that's 100% worth it at that point, especially if you've done been there and done that. Like, Skump won champs, Octane won champs. Like, they've done it all, you know? They've, they've completed what they need to do. But also, Skump, like, would have seen as the season progressed because of the way the Twitch thing was working, that it wasn't exclusive, and Zuma would have been killing it with the watch parties because he can actually do it on Twitch properly, and Skump's like, holy shit, the amount of money I'm leaving on the table. Um, obviously, as it turned out, this season slightly different because of the way the watch parties are done. But still, I mean, the point still stands. That's why Zinni dipped. He was like, yeah, get some of that bag. I'm straight out. Scump retires and Zinni follows him like two weeks later. Brilliant. Yeah, guys, where's my... Guys. <laughs> where's your slice of the pie, Trey? Come on. I, I had to do it by myself. Boys, boys, we got we got 20 minutes. We got to get to these matches. We got to get some preview, match previews here. We do. Well, I'm on the page. Phase... Ro okay, let me just quickly go through the matches of the weekend, Yeah. So these are the eight games this weekend. Wow, another two match day Friday, and it's a really exciting one today, guys. But we do have the banger to close out the weekend. I mean, Optic Phase. I guess we'll just go to this one real quick before we go back to discuss today's games. Like, can is it, what's going on? Have we got a mental block, these Optic boys, the same way we used to say about Phase? Or does Draz own their ship? This is only online, to be fair, but... You gotta think Optic would really like to win this one. I know it's kind of a lose lose for Optic because if Optic win, then it's like, oh, you only beat them online, cheese, whatever. And if they lose, it's like, oh, you're washed against FaZe. So you can't really win. But um, I think Optic kind of don't need to win precisely, but. Yeah, what do you Optic think? need to win. Yeah. Optic uh... need to win. I think, I, I, don't, I don't think this match is as important. It's going to be a great match. It's going to be fun to watch. But it's not as important as many people are, are putting weight on it. Only because there's a bunch of new maps. right? People are going to be playing new maps, new modes. It's a different game. With the new inclusion of these maps, this game, the game is different, by the way. I hope everyone understands this. This major onwards, where the pros are literally playing a different game now. They have to learn a bunch of new stuff, learn new strats that they've been running from the start of the year. Completely gone. Now they have to restart. So I wouldn't put as much weight on this week one matchup as some people are trying to put on it. It should be competitive. They should keep it close. Hopefully Optic or FaZe, no one gets smoked. But if they do, it really isn't the end of the world. There's a lot more COD to be played until the actual major. So I don't think it's anything for Optic or FaZe fans to stress about. I mean, I, I just see it as like we couldn't like we couldn't beat them at LAN. Now we can't beat them online if we lose. Like fucking hell, like it's looking slow. Definitely more pressure on the optic side to, to make this work and win. But like I said, unless the maps are literally invasion, Rio invasion, and like it's all the old meta maps, the old, you know, the maps that we've been running for the whole or not the whole year, but you know what I'm saying? We've ran a major two and since the beginning of the year, that would be a different case where if that is the map set at the end of it, then I would want to see optic definitely run them. But if it ends up with like a, you know, six star Vista and it's clearly a test of map pool overall, it's all new maps, then I have to say that not as much weight should be placed on this series and a win or loss here doesn't make or break anybody. No, I don't make or break anyone. I just think like if FaZe lose, it's like, all right, we've lost to LAG and we won the event. Like we're sweet. If Optic lose, it's like, fuck, we can't beat these fucking knobs like it like, i'm losing full like i don't yeah. like i said it's not gonna like it's not like a thing like oh yeah like we, we're gonna have to make a change or like shit's true but I, I think it's more like 
FaZe can lose and be like, all right, well, we, we lost to LAG, we nearly lost to LA Thieves, and we won the major, everyone else sucks. Optic are like, ah, oh, I can't beat Draz, maybe he does own us. Like, he is the CEO of Optic, <laughs> you know? Like, he puts it back in his bio or some shit. I think they, what I'll be looking for is, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Major 5, Cold War, when Optic Chicago beat FaZe for like the first time in a while, because FaZe owned that matchup that year as well, obviously. And Optic finally won a series against them. It was like a standoff game five search or something. Back in Cold War, major five qualifiers. Optic beat them. And Skump said after the year was over that like as soon as they beat them, they were like, ah, oh, we've done it. We're the best team or we're just as good as FaZe. And then, you know, the event's going to be different. And they basically won that series and slacked off, um, which is just so crazy to think about in hindsight. Because obviously FaZe, sure, they actually lost at major five, but they went on to dominate champs and win the ring comfortably. But Optic felt that they were just as good at that point. So I feel like almost for Optic, I don't think winning is bad or losing is bad necessarily. But it's like if they do win, they Optic might think, oh, you know, we've sussed it. You know, we, we've we've got we figured it out. We can be we can be phase. <laughs> we've like, sussed it. Yeah, we, you know what I mean. Like they might just think, oh, we're we're sorted. You know, we're best team in the game. Um, come land, we're gonna beat phase, and then not. I almost think if you're Optic fan, you might almost want them to lose a close series here. Just to be like, all right, fuck, like, we've lost six times now. Like, we've got to really lock in. Uh, <laughs> but is there any, uh, With the map set today, Rab, with uh, Rocker and FaZe, is there any Let's have uh, a look at it, baby. Star? I think there is. And... So, okay, map five. We ain't going map five, baby. So maybe it doesn't... We might go map five, I don't know. But um, this is the map I'm, set. I'm, we have a, I'm, it's I'm, I'm, a I'm nice map a, set. I'm taking a 3-1 on this. What, don't are we, say who what are we to. thinking? Don't, don't say don't don't say don't say who to like we all know who I'm choosing. No, no, I, I'm gonna. I do like the fact that we're like first map, first match. We get to see Vista played out on hardpoint. That is exciting, actually. Um, Vista. I don't think anyone's played that in ranked so far, but it is a mixy map. High, super high interactions, super high interactions. Like, you know, you you could be pushing up to like 50, 60 interactions on that map if you're a sub. If they are. A little bit less, but pretty high regardless. So I'm excited to see Vista play out. Um, Rio, kind of standard. Karachi control, Rio, six star. Yeah, I, I, I do think 3-1. I'm going to keep it honest. Uh, Buck, phase 3-1. But still an exciting series nonetheless. I think the main takeaways from this is Gunless and Standy. If they win or lose, they if they have a good series, it's it's a good thing for them. Like you know, your first series in the league, you don't want to finish it with a point six. You know. Yeah. If, if, I think, I think that I think that I'm not telling them to kill her. Hmm. Not telling them to kill her. I'm just saying, like, you don't you just don't want to get pissed on for your first game Ma back. Map one, map one, playing against Simp and Abizi on Vista sounds like hell. I'm yeah. Not Pierce, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. If you ever watch this or hear this back, buddy, I feel for you. New MCW, it's like shit against Simp and Abizi on a fucking Vista map. Uh, like, I, I sympathize you with my boy, I swear. Oh, oh. <laughs> predict the winner's ugly. Oh, wait, oh. I will say also one more thing. Sorry, one thing. Uh, if you're doing prize picks for this, map one, I don't know if they, I don't know if the prize picks people know how mixy Vista is yet. So I'm just saying, if uh, this is. Not this is not financial advice, but I would take some overs map one. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, this so have a look at this. Like, um, if you guys are looking to get involved in prospects, you haven't signed up yet. Obviously, use the referral code Breaking Point. Our friends over there, because not only is it a great place to play, but also look at the amount of detail that we've got on the Breaking Point site now to help you guys make some good picks. Because, so if you have a look here, these are the numbers for the series: map one to three, fifty-two point five. Higher, lower, you know the drill. Simp obviously is high, right? Because Simp has been frying. But he has been frying even more than this. Like, we can expand this. This is his average kills in his last five series. He's dropped, on average, over the first three maps, 67 kills. He had 74 against Optic, 70 against Optic, 58, 65, 69. So, like, all of his last five series, he'd have been over here. Bear in mind, this is Simp. But bear in mind, it is also that is sim to be fair. Too. Yeah, it is you know, map dependent. Get, but also now we got Rio Vista Rio. You know what I mean? We got Vista yeah, Karachi. You, yeah. Listen, if you get a Vista hard point or a Rio hard point, yeah, lump your house on simp. You got to think overs are cooking here. I know people in the chat are saying, that, okay, we have nothing for. Well, we do have some gunless stats. We, we've, but... got, we've got big P on a forty. <laughs> we got a big P over. from. The... Wow, big P's most recent series being. 
Wow, this is actually, I didn't know if we would know his recent series. Obviously, this is irrelevant yeah, to I mean, ages I, ago. We're yeah, talking yeah, Paris yeah. and Florida, bro. <laughs> wow. But like, I'd be lumping a house on, on, on Gunless here as well. 45.5, like, you you know, you're on par with a good old 25 bomb first map regardless. Unless you, <laughs> unless you, unless you shoot You absolutely win. bottle it, bro. Unless you super bottle it. Yeah. Listen, big, but listen, I might have to lump a quick 100 bomb on Big P dropping it over here. <laughs> It's interesting to see, like, Gunless is the series that he played, though, you know? Like, these are the most recent teams that he actually even played in the league, I guess, before they then went to that. Uh... Yeah, kind of crazy, actually. Um, I, I, my, my price pick is uh, more on a BZ, 25.5 map one. More yeah, that's like Gunless, one, the same here, actually. That's, what I, that, that's my price picks, everyone. That's yeah, I'm calling 20, it here. Okay, well, Lamar has more than Gunless. Like, you've got to think, right? You gotta think. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Gunless. That's what I'm saying. Gunless is the lowest. Lump your house on Gunless. All right. Yeah. Not picking Gunless here, I think, is wild. And then a BZ twenty-five point five on a map like Vista. If you played it in ranked, you know that motherfucker is gonna be running down mid, jumping into windows, or 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 flanking somebody. So he's he's gonna be head bashing and getting more than twenty-five kills. A quick two p two man pick three x your money overs on both of those boys. Price picks to the moon, breaking point to the moon. Use code breaking point. It's interesting, actually, the Draza ones, like, because we've got map two kills here. His last five, he's averaged eight, and they want over. Seven. I think that's a bit. I don't know. I think that's a bit risky to me. But I don't know. Like, Draza's I mean, been cooking in his search, to be fair. And what are we playing I mean, here? Rio search? Have we got Big P on a 5.5? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you got to think he gets more than six. Nah, he dropped a donut yeah. against FaZe on the 28th of May. Whatever Never mind, was. yo. That's yo do not lump your house on it. Do not. All right, you'll be, you, he'll be knocking on my door asking for a spot on my sofa. We got map three. Now, map three, we got lots of greens here. They, they want us to pile it on map three, according to the data. But Gunless is like green across the board, yeah. Okay, Gunless's stats are kind of... Uh, Kind of tempting, actually. Seventy point five over. They are That's tempting, yeah. Control. But I already, I already, I already know what's going to happen, bro. I fear Karachi control though. Phase might just slam them in about ten seconds, and nobody gets many kills. I like the sound of that. Yeah. The fuck. Well, it's like I don't know. We got some right. combo ones as well. I know, I know, I know, I know. We don't have the most entertaining series next. But yeah, you just go break. Oh, let's talk about. Let's website. go. Let's, let's, let's yeah, we, we, can, we, we talk about. We've got eight minutes left. Yeah, we got eight minutes. We gotta keep going through the next series. Next series. Yeah, Gorillas Legion. Are you guys buzzing for this one? Let's get a one in the chat if you're buzzing for this series. I'm I, I listen, I right low now. key like this match. Yeah, 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 I was gonna say I kinda am buzzing only because LAG yeah, just I'm fried on land. I'm buzzing. And then Yeah, but uh, listen, I know it ain't I know it ain't like optic phase or subliners phase, but it's like these, these series are cool, especially because, like, now we're coming into the time where you want to make champs. Like, every series is sweaty as fuck now. You you give me this matchup, Major 1, I might pass out. Like, <laughs> I might be snoring. Now, this is genuinely this interesting, now, though. Like, I, I'm actually looking forward to it. It's just, like, last match of the day. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? Predictions. Predictions. Predictions, boys. Let's go. Predictions. i got to take Three, Vegas, two, man. LAG. Wow. Three, zero... Vegas Legion. I got Vegas three one. I think. I think I I take them on these. I'm guessing they're gonna have to play some of the new maps, and I think I have more dog on Vegas. But Nero's been shit in the bed. I mean, again, if we look at the price pick stuff, he's averaged forty six kills in his last five over maps one to three. They've got him higher lower than fifty four point five. So if there's, one, if there's one person I'm not lumping my fucking house on, it's Nero. Yeah, I think he Nero does, under is a bit nah, risky he, here because nah, they've he, got all nah, the... Uh, he does, listen, he does everything on a map that's good, maps. but like he's very... His kills are very hit and miss. I think you'd be fuming think, if you put money on him to do something and you had to watch him play. I think you'd be fuming. You know what I mean? He just has that play style where it's like, wow. I need him to get kills, but he drops three deaths but gets <laughs> the team the hill. Like, he did... <laughs> He does everything right, but he doesn't like the kills don't go along with him because he helps his team out more than anyone else, really. I'm like, oh, Nero needs to get that kill. Oh, he just baited for attach. Attach gets a free piece. Yeah, they've broke. Fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> uh, Per Jane, the same legacy series coming up. I mean, 90% of the people that are put on the website think that Vegas are going to win. We've got some head to head scoring matchups here. Last five games as well, actually. Wow. It's kind of crazy that Gorillas really won three series in a row. And then they lost to Toronto. But Vegas also kind of looking good. 
probably could have beaten Carolina on LAN. Ah, I'm not. Listen, look at the teams they beat. Yeah, I guess that does tell a story, huh? Bro, they've, bro, they've played three teams. <laughs> beat two of them twice. <laughs> one of them once, lost one, and then they lost to Toronto. Yeah, they might be finessing yeah. Seattle victories, which don't count in my book. Wait, 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 who was it? Wait, who was it that one year where it was guaranteed? Was it Vegas? We, we called it Vegas points or something like Vegas points. <laughs> I think that was year one. We yeah, it, Vegas it was like points. a guarantee. I think it might have been Cold War, actually. It was, it was like, like a guaranteed, guaranteed 10, points. 10 point. Yeah. yeah, whenever you played Paris. I could, have I could show up hungover and blindfolded, <laughs> mate, and I'd still pull out away with 10 points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like a gift, you know. It was like, oh, yeah, it was, you, it was, get, you get your free 10 points this stage because you get you, to play a You walk into the facility, you were like, fuck. Who do you play? <laughs> Shit. You'd look at it, you'd scroll down, uh, how many points, like, you know, we guaranteed this many points, and it was always a guaranteed 10 from those <laughs> bastards. Always a guaranteed 10. Never had an issue with that. <laughs> oh, what a team. Was yeah, it Vanguard? It might have been Vanguard, it might have been Cold War, like... No, I'm pretty sure it was Vanguard, it because was... that's the year I... Get... <laughs> no, that's the year I competed in, because I didn't No, you're right, yeah, yeah, no, I think it was... It was Vanguard, Vanguard yeah. yeah. Every, everyone, bro, every single time you said... Uh, everyone's here for their monthly... Paris, Paris coin. <laughs> I don't really exist in this year, apart from like maybe nah, Surge to, a little bit. They definitely nah, did exist. Do a, you see, everyone, ah, oh, they got their monthly Paris coin in there. Cash that in. There's your ten CDL <laughs> points. Walk away with them. You had to make sure you executed on your free cash in there. You don't want to be bottling those. Oh yeah, won, no, like, if you lost it, no, oh, if you lost God. that, you was in for a bad split. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. If you lost your if you lost your monthly Paris coin ten points, you you were in for a bad split. Roster change was needed. I mean, there we have it. Those wait, are the games wait, for today. Wait. We're gonna we're not gonna go to the the weekend or no? Yeah, just, sure, just for today. sure. Yeah, yeah. well, let's let's. Uh, oh my god, look at this! I found all the. There's only like matches. eight matches. We talked about we talked yeah. about this these two optic phase. We kind of okay. Gave, yeah, Gorillas Ultra. We're thinking Ultra okay. Dub Boston so Rio. Okay, Boston yeah, Heretics is kind of interesting, huh? That's not interesting. Boston win that. Okay. Think so. First series though. Come on, okay. come on, bro. I don't know, they, they, bro. There's no slasher now. There's there's bro, pentagram uh, and beans. I don't know what's going on, bro. Bro, I'm not doing this, bro. But Boston. Nah, man. <laughs> nah. Space, my, my, Miami, Miami dub, Real masterclass. Done. You're gonna put you, you want to put some money on it? I don't bet. It's a rum. I just yeah, came out of Ramadan. Go. How dare you? How dare you, brother? Exactly. Exactly. I hit you up after Ramadan. See, I didn't do it while you. I didn't do it while you were doing it. I hit you up after. I'm respectful. <laughs> <laughs> Boston, and then we got he's a... just scared Trey. he's just scared of uh... yeah i know exactly he, he knows money you're right office. he knows you're right i played loser wait, wait, wait loser lo wait loser loser comes on the show uh in a tank top that's it done no 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 fully fully whole show <laughs> i done that the last show or the other show did you full 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 tank? <laughs> yeah, Spanish I done one card, of them. Bro. Oh, that's not even good. That, 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 okay, that's a terrible wager then. Never all mind. Right, we'll think right, about this right. later. Off stream, off stream. Right. Next one. Uh... <laughs> well, um, bro, this guy Rocker. holding his mic is so trolly. Yeah, not bro. Great up, bro, bro. Like, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Should go on that uh, Toronto Ultra podcast. New York, Minnesota. Yeah, New York Rocker. I'm taking. I've got to take the New York dub there. Unlucky Rocky, you're going to into I, tough I'm stuff. Not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna judge this one until I see Rocker play. Honestly. Yeah, that, that's honestly what I was gonna thinking of right now. Yeah, that's. I fair. mean, I, I mean, we kind. I mean, we kind of have to. So I'll go in New York, but. And then we got I, Sunday I, I think, Surge I Ravens. Yeah, I'll be asleep for that one. <laughs> I think it's all. It's just the optic phase waiting room, really. Legion um, Thieves is also good though because they played not that long ago, and Thieves got the dub online. Um, yeah, you can actually see it here. They played them, they beat them 3-1 online on the uh, on the 10th of March. So, you got to think. No, the Le Le Legion Thieves, that'll be a good game. i got Thieves taking that one, though. Yeah, we got a Joe Seattle Deceives. Sur um, he's coming in. Yeah, that's his debut, right? And then we got uh, Seattle Surge, Carolina Ravens, I'm taking... Ravens. Ravens, Ravens. I guess. I'm taking Ravens, I but I will say I'm excited to see 0-4 play just generally. All right, optic phase. Not... Who we got? 
space. You think an ace? That's good. Uh, I go go good. first. Oh, uh, you oh you're, I'll, I'll go before you. I'll let you get the last call. Hang on, hang on. This is this is why. All right, phase because I'm rich. I'm handsome. I got my own house. Money spread. Optic CEO. <laughs> okay, I forgot where you were going with that for a second. Yeah, yeah. I see you. I I'm see going. You. I'm going. I'm going. Op I'm going optic. I'm going optic because of the because of the mixiness of these maps. I think Shotzi masterclass early on because it's if they do get a vista again. We need map sets. Map sets matter massively in this prediction. Like I said, it doesn't matter who wins this in reality. But I'm gonna go optic if we do get a new map masterclass. We're getting a Shotzi masterclass and a Pred masterclass on a vi on a vista vista Rio and like, let's say we get a six star in there. I think we see optic win. It could happen. I'm going Simp Masterclass. Continues to be the best player in the game. GG, face take it. 3-2 though, close series. Ah, 3-0. No. <laughs> East is. Nah, this guy's actually Patty P reincarnate. Earlier he said, yeah, no, no, just early. Right now, no, bro. no, bro. Never wrong just early. I was, I was saying FaZe will win a major, th major two. Guess what? Came out, bop, bop, bop. All right, I think yeah. that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks all for tuning in. Another cracking pre-show, as always. You know what to thousand. expect at this point. Look, 1,100, actually. Yeah, smash through 1,100. Easy as it does it. And I've just seen on the stream, we've got Merc and Maven about to load into a Vista Hardpoint. So I think we'll leave you guys be. Thanks for tuning in. We're probably not going to do... We're going to do like a one pre-show weekend. It may not always be on a Friday. It depends. Um, yeah. Because, you know, there's not enough to talk about every single day of the weekend. So I don't know the way COD's going. Maybe there is. I don't know. We've got to save some content well, for Monday, though. Huh? Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna try to keep it on. Try our best to keep it on Fridays. But if there is either a scheduling issue or they're just such a great matchup, we might have to move it to a Saturday or Sunday. But we're gonna try to keep it consistent on Fridays. And then Mondays, of course, y'all know, one p.m. PST, four p.m. EST, eight p.m. GMT. Nine is dope. Check nine p.m. My bad. Nine p.m. GMT. It's Dope Check episode 16. Our last episode broke 22,000. You saw Sensor, Slasher, and Sib go at it. You never know who's going to pull up. Don't miss it. This Monday, Dope Check episode 16. Make sure you're there. Good way to end it.